In this video, you're going to learn how you can apply Newton's first law and second law to a typical question. For example, in this case, when you pull a box along the floor. But before that, let's recap on some basic concept of Newton's first law and second law. Now, whenever an object is at rest or if it's moving at constant speed in a straight line, Straight away, you must know that this belongs to Newton's first law. And there are three conditions that you must know. Firstly, that means the forces acting on the body, they must be balanced. And when that happens, the net force or the resultant force acting on the object has to be zero. And there will not be any acceleration experienced by the object. Next, whenever an object is going faster and faster, the speed increases is accelerating or if the object is slowing down, the speed decreases is decelerating or the third scenario where the object is going around a bend or a circle and the direction changes. Take note that these three scenarios, it belongs to Newton's second law. And when that happens, three conditions you must know. Firstly, the forces are not balanced now and because they are not balanced, there will be a resultant or net force acting on the body. And this net force is going to cause the object to have a acceleration, maybe a accelerating or decelerating, depends on the direction of the net force. Now let's go through the question. The first scenario here where you have a block of mass 2 kg on the floor and you apply a pulling force of 1 newton and it's given to you that this box remains at rest or is stationary on the floor. That means to say straight away come to your mind it should be Newton's first law and the forces are balanced, the net force acting on the block has to be zero and there's no acceleration. So that means to say in order for this block to have zero net force, since the pulling force is one Newton, there must be another force, in this case the friction between the block and the floor, the friction, the magnitude, the size must be equal and opposite to the pulling force. Therefore, it's 1 Newton. In the second scenario here, where you increase the pulling force to 2 Newton instead, but it's given that the box still remains at rest. So, once again, it's still Newton's first law. All the forces has to be balanced. Net force equals to 0. So now, the friction between the blocks and the floor will be 2 Newton in order for the net force to be 0. So that's how you find the friction. In the third scenario, when you increase the pulling force to 5 Newton as given to you that the box right now is moving at constant speed in a straight line with a speed of 3 meter per second. Now straight away come to your mind is that this is still Newton's first law and the forces are balanced, the net force is zero and there's no acceleration. So that means to say similar to the first two scenario, the opposing force which is the friction, the magnitude will be 5 Newton. It has to be equal and opposite to the pulling force in order for the net force to be zero and hence it's moved at constant speed. So in short, from these three scenarios here, whenever an object is at rest or constant speed, it belongs to Newton's first law. In the next scenario, what if the pulling force is increased to 8 Newton? Now previously, when the pulling force is 5 Newton and the box is moving at constant speed 3 meter per second, so obviously when you increase it to 8 Newton, it will accelerate towards the right hand side. And, but how do you know what's the value of the frictional force over here? Now we have to refer back to here. Now remember this, whenever if the box is already moving, it can go faster or slower or constant speed in this case here, in the third scenario. Once you determine that the frictional force is 5 Newton, that is like the maximum frictional force and you will remain at it is as long as the box is moving. You don't change the box, you don't change the floor. So this is like a maximum. So over here, when the box is moving faster and faster, the frictional force will still be 5 Newton. That's a important concept. So now you can see that the pulling force is 8 and the friction is 5 Newton. Obviously now there's a unbalanced forces here. 
and how do you find the acceleration of the box I'll be using f equals to ma where the f represents the net force or resultant force so how do you find resultant force you take 8 minus 5 newton is equals to the mass of the box 2 times the acceleration and if you solve this you'll get 1.5 meter per second square that means to say every second the speed will increase by 1.5 meter per second now how do you find the speed at the end of 4 seconds previously before the acceleration is moving at 3 meter per second that's the initial speed at the end of 4 seconds was the speed I'll be using this formula acceleration equals to V minus U over T and the S acceleration is 1.5 the final speed is what you want to find and the initial speed before you start the acceleration is 3 and the time taken is 4 and when you solve it it will be 9.0 meter per second at the end of that 4 second in the last scenario let's assume where the box reaches a speed of 9 meter per second you release the pulling force that means to say there's still a frictional force that's acting on it and the friction will still be 5 newton which we determined earlier on but what will happen to the box when you release the pulling force some students think that the box will come to a stop immediately but the answer is no because previously the box is already moving because of its inertia it will not come to a complete stop so it will continue to move but it will decelerate and slowly the speed decreases and then eventually it comes to a stop now so you have to take note that the frictional force is to the left but the motion of the box is to the right so this friction which is now the net force because the friction is the only force acting on the box right now is in the opposite direction to the motion so this net force opposite to the motion will cause it to decelerate so how do I find the deceleration I'll be applying the same formula F equals to ma but the resultant force I need to put a negative 5 because this frictional force is opposite to the motion so mass is 2 times the acceleration you will end up with minus 2.5 meter per second square and you are on the right track because the box will slow down and you will end up, end up with a negative acceleration so next how long does it take to for the box to come to a complete rest so I'll be applying a equals to V minus u over T and because this is an acceleration formula and you're undergoing deceleration do not forget to put your negative sign here so it's minus 2.5 and the final speed is when it comes to rest so it will be zero and the initial speed as mentioned it reaches a before you let go the speed of the box is 9 meter per second and the unknown time for it to come to a complete stop and if you solve it that will be 3.6 seconds so with this simple example I hope you will have a better understanding of Newton first law and second law and how you tackle the calculation so thank you so much